to our last session. Uh, you remember what we've covered in the previous session? We got introduced to GitHub, and uh, at least we now know we have the concept of what's meant by GitHub. And I believe if we uh, try to practice, we'll be able to 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 understand it properly and how it works. So today we're going to resume uh, from where we stopped at in the previous class. You remember the previous class of that programming, we stopped in a section where we could make what? Where we could make uh, four loops, okay? So we're going to look at other types of loops in that programming. And then, uh, we'll, and then no, we will see how we can implement them. So I'm going to create another file. Uh, I'm going to call it number five underscore while loop dot php. Okay, I uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> the that. Eh? <laughs> so there we go, and uh, there I'm going to go ahead and uh, create my what my main function int main and main the word main is small letters and then say return zero uh, so let me zoom so you can see things clearly uh, there we go so after i can simply test uh, and see if things are okay by simply saying print hi and then i save expand my terminal and write that then the name of the file which is uh, five dot while loop. So I should expect hi, and you can see hi has displayed on my screen. Beautiful. Then mean that you're good to go. Okay. Okay. So now let us look at while loop. So while loop is the one that uh, will be executed until a certain condition is reached. Okay. So I mean I said until a condition is false. So I can just simply say. I mean to write while loop its syntax we just simply write while we open the bracket and close it and then put the curl bracket and then here you put what you need to be executed okay so you can see while uh while int i mean sorry while let us first initialize i here you say int i equals to zero okay then you say while i is less than 10. So what does it mean? As long as i is less than 10, this piece of code that is in between here will keep on executing. So if I come and simply say uh, print and then I say i, okay, print i, okay. So if I save, it means that it's going to begin and say okay i equals to zero is uh, is zero less than 10 yes so if i don't increase this i what does it mean it is going to loop forever why because i will not change it will remain to zero and of course zero will always be less than 10 and this loop will never end until the of judgment so i have to increase it eh, by saying i plus plus so that every time it executes it increases itself by one so it will become two i mean it will become one so is one less than two than ten yes then it will again execute and then it becomes two is two less than ten again it execute so it is ten is ten less than ten no it will stop so it will probably display from zero up to nine so that's what is all meant by while loop so if i save and then i run this piece of of program okay you can see we have executed zero up to number nine so that is how we implement the while loop so you can also do the other way around for example you can begin from 10 and then you want to come back up to zero so what does it mean you have to change this and make it zero so what does it mean it means that while i is greater than zero it should keep on printing so it means that if we do such a thing it means that this i will have to reduce it otherwise if we don't reduce it 
the I will go in the opposite side and the condition will be checking at the opposite side and hence you may end up having an endless loop so you have to change this until minus minus so it will begin from 10 it will be reduced to 9 9 is still greater than 0 and then 8 and up to 2 uh, 1 1 is still greater than 0 and until it is 0 so when 0 is 0 greater than 0 of course no and then it will stop so that is how we'll do it we implement the while loop Okay, so let's go ahead and Okay, let's go ahead and execute this piece of program and see how it looks like So I'll clean my screen and then run the piece of program. So can you see it began from 10 up to 1 So if I ask you to, to create a program that prints a number in reverse from 100 to 0 or to negative 100 you should be able to do such a program. In fact, I'll give you some tasks to try and then I'll ask you to add them on your GitHub repositories and say or share with me so I can be able to see if you're really doing shit or not, okay? So, that's it. That's why loop. So, let's go ahead and look at another one more loop called do why loop. And you can see how I'm organizing my, pro my, my, my files and my topics. I want also you to do the same thing, okay? Just for your good, so that you can be able to trace every topic, practice it in its own file, not to mix everything as Katogo. Six underscore do underscore while underscore loop. Do it. Do it that. I'm a PHP developer. So you'll forgive me. So I'll simply say it main and then return zero. That one you should memorize it. Eh? So after doing that, I'm going to initialize, I mean I'm going to write the do while loop. So the do while loop for it it will first execute and then check the condition. That's all the meaning of the word do while loop. So let's just say that we want to print from one up to uh, negative 10 okay so using uh, do while loop what shall we do we just simply say int x equals to 1 and then say do and open the curl bracket like this and at the end of the bracket write the word while and open the bracket like this and then your condition will come here so do while x is greater than minus 10 so it will keep on executing this piece of code as long as x is still greater than what? Greater than 10. So the whole point here is it will not check. It will first execute, then check. But for for loop, it first check, then execute. While loop, it first check, and then execute. But here, it will first do, then execute. So let us say that maybe x is the okay let us look at the difference between while and do while loop by the way this can come in your exams so do while loop for example for the do while for the while loop for example let's say uh this one is checking if x is greater than zero now what if x is minus one so what does it mean it means that x is not greater than zero so it, it will not execute so if i come and run this guy you'll see it is not executing. Why? It's not. I mean, it will not. It's not displaying anything. Why? Because one is less than. So it will first check, and if the condition is not right, it will skip the bracket part. But for the do while loop, it will first do, even though the condition is wrong. At least it will do one time. Eh? So let us say that maybe we have negative eleven. Okay. So negative eleven is not less than zero right it's not less than a uh, it's not less than negative 10. so if i come and print and say um printing x okay so here at least you'll have to display one time okay it will first do then check so let's go ahead and and, and run the file so it's going to be dot six and then you see it's displayed at, at least negative 11. why because it first do and then 
So you can look at different scenarios. So there are so many scenarios of how you can implement this in what in your real world. So if you want at least something to first happen before you check the condition, that is how you can do it. You can implement. So if I want to look from minus one up to minus ten, I can still simply say x is minus one, and then since this minus have to come towards uh, ten, so I have to reduce it still and say x minus minus. So by doing like that, we will see it is beginning from minus ten and stops to minus nine, which is really beautiful. Okay, so. Go ahead and practice these things in your free time. Practice, 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 practice. Until you get them. Until you understand them. Okay? Though they may be boring at the beginning, but that is the best foundation you can ever give to yourself. If you wish you want to be um, a developer. So practice them. Make sure that you understand them properly. So that is do while loop for you. And that's why loop for you. And that's for loop for you. So file that we have not saved in GitHub, you'll see, they'll be kind of on, in a green color. That's how Visual Studio Code will show you that those files that you're seeing in green, you have not committed them and you have not saved them on GitHub, but they are there. So that's how they'll be like. And But when you commit them and say push them on GitHub, they'll come back to the normal coloring. So that is the uh, while loop. Now let us look at the uh, conditions, okay? condition or decision making so we use decision making to make decision okay because almost every programming language that we will write it will involve us making decision when someone tries to log in you have to check first of all is the username that he has provided to us exist on our database or no so if it exists you write the word if it exists do this Otherwise, if this username does not exist in the database, then do it the other way around. So that's what, that's what we call if condition. So it is almost impossible to write a programming a program that does not have if condition. Because almost everything that we do, it will I mean that you need programming will involve decision making so that the, the software can be kind of what? Automated. So we always need the if condition or the decision making. So to make decisions in that programming language, we use what we call if if conditions. So the if condition will help us to see whether this is right or not. If it is right, do this. If doesn't, it's not right, do the other thing around. Okay? So let's go ahead and write our if condition since we have got the concept of what's meant by if condition. So I'm going to go ahead and create my first if condition by simply right clicking here and say seven underscore if statement dot dot okay so that is number seven for me and then i'll go ahead and create the main function and then return zero so after doing that, now the next thing that we're going to do, we're going now to create uh, a condition that's going to uh, help us make a decision. For example, I was going to see if one is greater than two or not. So to do that, we just simply say if one is greater than two. Okay, so if one is greater than two, we need to display. Okay, let's say if two is greater than one, we need to display something. Okay, let's create here some variables. Maybe we can say int x equals to one and y equals to two. So I can simply say if x is greater than y, and then Okay, I can say if y is greater than one, then x I want to show you something. And then I can say print and say yes. And put the value of x. x is greater, I mean, sorry, 
y is greater than x. So that one is going to help us uh, see if the decision is correct or not. So let's we'll expand our terminal and we clean it and then we write dot and then 7 press the tab key by pressing the tab key it will help you accomplish the file name and then press enter can you see yes 2 is greater than 1 you get it i hope so you've understood it now assume that uh we check if x is greater than what is greater than y okay we want to check if x is greater than y but we know x is 1 and y is 2 so what are we going to expect of course nothing why because this bracket was skipped because x is not greater than y is not greater than y therefore the bracket was skipped so it was not executed so that is how we check okay the values if they are greater than or not so that's one way so the other way is now what if you want to display okay if x is not greater than one then you should tell them that like, it is not greater than one so what do i do i'll have to again write the condition here and say if x is greater than less than what is less than y and then i'll say uh y is not greater than x so if i go ahead and do like this you'll be able to see Two is not greater than one. I mean, sorry, so I can put here x and y because what you're comparing. So you can see uh, one is not greater than two. So there, that's how we check the conditions. Uh, we can check if the something is equal to or not. But the main point here, we are able to make decisions and tell whether a number is greater than the other or not. Now, you can see here there is a kind of what of code redundancy. For example, we have we have read we have wrote we have written two separate if conditions, and that is not a good practice. So, in case you need such kind of uh, decision that are attached to the other, there is another better alternative that you should use so that your pro software should be as I mean your program should be as as perfect as possible so that one is what we call the else okay so the else will be in case the first condition was not true the else should be executed so let me go ahead and create another file of else okay else underscore um, if underscore statement dot that okay so i'm just simply going to copy this and paste it here Okay, so I'm going to come here and say, so you can just simply say if uh, x is greater than y, x greater than y, we will just simply say, yes, x is greater than y. So if it is not, you'll have to attach what you call the else part, okay? So the else part will be the alternative to that. So in case it is not, you should just interpret the else and say it is not. Okay. So I can say no, x is not greater than y. So here you can see we have managed to attach almost two different conditions in the same one in the same uh, instance. So if I go ahead and run it. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 no. So, is it saying oh, I'm running a wrong file? Sorry, I'm running a wrong file. Let me run the correct file. So, we go with that, that, and then eight. Okay, so you can see no, one is not greater than what? One is not greater than two. And we have used that by the power of what? By the power of the else. So if it's not true, it will execute the else part. So 
sometimes we may need to add more add more conditions that are attached together so that is when we need to use uh, else if for example assume that uh, we want to grade uh, uh, students according to their marks so if you have a certain total mark we should get a certain comment and if you have another mark we should get another a different comment so how shall we do that we can use that by the power of else if okay so i'll just we can effectively effectively do that so i'll just simply create another file i'm going to call it nine underscore else if underscore i mean that else if statement that okay so this is the else if part eh? so it will check the else part so i'm going to duplicate it here the main and then we are going to maybe grade a certain mark so you can say mark equals to maybe 30 i mean let's say maybe two maybe we are grading up to 10 okay so you can see someone who is less than uh, five you should i mean someone who is, who is between a uh, three and one it should be poor someone between uh, five and uh, five and 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 two it should be fair someone between seven and so if you want to break them into that but someone will end of the day get a certain comment that's when you need the else if uh, condition part of what of that programming. So I'm going to go ahead and say if mark is less than two, okay, I can print uh, poor. Can print poor, okay. So I want to attach another else. So to attach another else, if we just say else, if. So only one of these will be executed if it is correct, and then to skip the meaning. So else if mark is less than what? Is less than uh, five. Let's say fair. Okay. So I'll do the same thing here. And let's say if is less than uh, seven. I can say uh, good and then lastly if is less than if is less than 10 or 10 yes I can say very good okay so by doing like that it's going to help us uh, great uh, according to these marks that someone will have scored here so I'll go ahead and clean the screen and then run the project, the program by simply saying that and say uh, nine underscore. So you can see we have fair. Why? Because we scored two and two is less than, uh, less than, uh, I mean, two is, is less than two. I mean, it's less than five. So it is not less than two. So this was skipped. But it came to five because two is less than what? Less than is greater than two. Or it is equal to two. So this was not executed. So if you want to include the two, of course you have to attach there an equal sign. So it can also be included. So if I run this one now, it should show poor. Why? Because two has just been included. Now let's go ahead and do what? And uh, change this one maybe to six or seven clean and then run it you can see we have very good why because seven is beyond seven and it is inside this section so that is how we do what that is how we validate uh i mean how, that's how we make condition is what in that programming language so another way that is else, else if and i hope you guys have understood have looked at if you have looked at else if and i look at the Establishment. So, if there's any question, someone can ask right now.
but as you prepare your question i can proceed so let me go ahead and create now the the switch statement so the switch statement will help us from uh, writing uh, such amount of words of code just to make a single decision but it will optimize our code as well as the performance of our, of our project if it is implemented where necessary so i'm going to show you how we can uh, create a what we can create a switch in what in that programming language so uh you give me a few uh just one minute someone's calling me just only one minute i'll be back and then uh, we finish today's lecture just one minute eh? don't go away i'm just coming in a minute less than a minute in fact number 10 all right switch okay so a switch statement is also another effective way of how we can do it we can implement a decision making in that programming language so i just simply create here my main function okay and then i'm going to make a switch for example what we are able to attain here we can also attain it using the switch okay so i can just simply say my mark equals to maybe two and then i say uh, the syntax of writing a switch we just simply say switch and then you pass here the bracket the ma and then the value that you want to switch and then you start writing like this it's a case and then you put the value so in case it is uh, less than 10 and then you put sorry in case it's 10 i mean sorry this one is help, help us to do specific decisions so in case it's one so you can go ahead and do it and do what you want okay so for example you can say break maybe say one maybe you can say uh I say we want to change these words to I mean these numbers to words okay so after writing whatever you want to do so here it can be as many pieces of code as you want but after finishing you write the word break so break it will help to do what uh, to to stop okay it will help to stop so it means that if it is one or if 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 this X I mean if this mark is one it will right it will only execute this piece of piece of code and then stops so you can go ahead and say case two so i can say the same thing mark is two and then break so you can go ahead and uh, and also say case three and the same mark is three okay so i can go ahead and run so that's how we write switch uh help us to make specific decision depending on specific value others if you write if to make a specific decision if condition it will do what it will be so much complicated so if i go ahead and run the file it's going to be that uh 10 and i press the tab key so you can see two is two so if i write here maybe three save come and clean and you can see the three digit is three in letters so if i come and write for example 20 and come and write it so does it mean nothing will be printed why because 20 is out of these ranges that we put so in such kind of way you have to show some a, a user why it was not printed okay so 
I can simply say uh, default. So the word default is the one that defines that uh, that the project. I mean that the condition has ended. So whatever whatever f was not found within the condition before, it should be displayed here. So I can just simply say print, and then put the what the value, and say x is more i mark not x mark is more than the numbers that we know so in case uh this value is uh, not within this condition it will be here so you can creatively think of how you can make use of such kind of what such kind of uh, uh, conditions so if I go ahead and run so you can see uh, I have to put a semicolon clear the screen run it you can see 20 is more than the numbers that we know I mean it's more than the numbers that we know <laughs> we know we know like this okay so you can say maybe 20 is out of range something like that. so you can use this one also to implement the different ways of how you can do your day-to-day -day activities so that is the switch case statement for you uh, then we go to data types so we have different data types in that programming language okay among the data types that we have in that in that programming language let me go ahead and create another file, 11 underscore, data types, dot dot, okay, so I'll go ahead and create a main function, int, I can say it main, just read that main only and then press enter, so once you do that, now, these are the data types that are supported by that programming language. The first one is int. Int is the one for integers, managing numbers that don't have uh, decimal values, okay, or decimal points. So string, string is the one that will help us to manage the characters, such as, what? Such as uh, names, words, etc. Then now uh, we have double. Double will help us to manage numbers with decimal points, and then. I mean, they will, they will help us number to manage number with this more point. I mean, they will help us to manage very huge numbers. Then uh, float, float it helps us to manage numbers with what? With decimal point. Then boolean is a type that will help us to tell whether a thing is true or false. So, I, for example, if I have if I want to define mangoes uh, as a string, you just simply write string. Integers we've already seen. String and say x equals to, uh, maybe you can say name equals to John Black. And then put a semicolon. Then we can go ahead and display, okay, this name. By just simply saying print. Uh, my name is and then we substitute there the name so I save now it means that uh, I've defined here a string oh this data type to be what a string and I'm able to do it to access it so if I run it and by simply saying that 11 you can see my name is John Black so what does it mean? It means that we can also store information in form of specific data types such as what? Such as strings. Okay, so another way uh, we can use doubles. Uh, double will store a very huge number. Then float will be able to store a number with a decimal point. And then uh, that, I mean, boolean will store the number that is has two states either false or true that's what we call bull or boolean 
Now we can proceed to uh, lists. So we use lists in that programming to do what? To, uh, to, to store multiple information. For example, uh, in C programming, if you ever started C programming, we have things called arrays. By the way, before I proceed here, uh, these strings has got a lot of what? a lot of functions that uh, comes with they are already pre-built in that programming language. For example, you can know the length of a string. You can know uh, you can convert the, a, a string from a certain value to another value from small letters, small letters to capital letters. All those things and so many others. Uh, the features that are there available for what for strings in what in that programming so uh, now let's proceed now to what to lists so lists they help us to store and organize uh, huge data together so if in case you have maybe a list of students that you need to play to display on the screen then you may need to keep those information in what in a list other than keeping it in another way around so let's go ahead and look at what how we can manage uh, lists, all these containers that can store more than one, more than one, uh, more than one variables. So I'll just simply say lists. Okay. So that one is going to help us to deal with lists. Uh -huh, but let me first hear from you guys if there's any comments so far. Anyone who has anything to say about the progress so far? I want to hear from you guys. I'm not teaching myself. Masuba? Masuba, you have something to say? Can't hear you. Oh, it's my earphones. Maybe you guys have been speaking and put it here. Wait a minute. Maybe it's my earphone. Eh? Oh, oh. I think my earphones have issues. Let me make zoom to get here. This external speaker. Hmm? I can't hear anything. I want to make zoom to Use my external speaker. So can someone say something? Can you say something? Yes, hello. Okay, I can now hear. Uh, so, is there anyone with a question so far? Oh, see what it is. Anyone with a question, guys? Be free, be free. Open your microphone and say something. Eh? I shouldn't be teaching myself here alone. Eh? Anyone in the question? I can't hear you. Susan? 
Do you have a question? Not yet. Okay. Uh, Kato. Kato Steven. Yes. Uh, yeah, you're very loud and clear. Do you have a query yes. so far? No, no. I have no clear. But are we together? Very much. That is beautiful, sir. Okay, let us conclude our last three minutes, eh? So we can go and do some, I think. So, I'll share my screen. Okay, so they shared. Okay, um, we are on lists. So, uh, we see that we can use lists to do what? To perform different operation in that programming language. I mean to store different data in that program language. So to create a list, I'll just simply write main. And then to create a list, you just simply do like this. You say list, and then you open these square brackets like this. And then you write the, uh, the data type that you're going to store in, those particular, in that particular list. So I can say this list, I'm going to store strings. You already know what's meant by data types. So, and I can call this one names. So, inside this string, I can add there some names. Okay? So, I can add there. Um, uh, 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 for example, who? Y. K. Museveni. And then, can add maybe. Chagulani can add Dr. Yesige Kiza Yesige can add Amriat and then I can add who Katumba Oy <laughs> Katumba. So those are the names and they are in what? In the list. So if you need to display these names in, uh, maybe in the, in the console, so it means that you may need to look through the, this list as you display them one by one. So this list comes with its own kind of loop that you can use, which you call for each. So if you want to look through these names, you can just simply say names dot for each, okay? So this dot for each will help you to loop through these names and so each name that will be looping it will be stored here okay i can call it maybe a name to be stored here as a, a name okay so i can go ahead and print and say uh name so by doing like this i can be able to have a list of all, all these printed in this way okay so if i go ahead and run and say that and then say 12 and run you see, all the names have been added, have been displayed. So this list comes with a lot of handy functions that can help you uh, deal with it. For example, we have one function called add. So if you just simply say name dot, you'll see multiple things that you can do what, that you can play with this list. Can you see them? So in your free time, you can come and play with this one shuffle remove to list to string wire remove at length reverse all of them you can so you can come and do it and play with these ones eh? clear and the rest but for me i can use for example dot add so you can make guess what is meant by dot add dot add of course it will allow us to add there something in what in this uh list so for example i can add here um Gisha Muntu. Okay. I can add here uh Norbert Mao uh, Mao something like that. So it means that these are going to be added in this particular list. So that's how you can do that. So can you see? All of them that have been added. So this is add. So another thing that you can do with the list is called the shuffle. Shuffle will uh, 
randomize the list okay so it will shuffle it as just it says eh? it will create a random list so it will mix them eh? automatically so if i come and, and run it can you see we don't have the same order that we had it here again if we shuffle it again you'll see the order has changed so there are so many other interesting uh things that you may need to do as to 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 learn i mean to to implement in the list another one we call it sort so this sort will code it will sort according to what to uh alphabetical letter you can call single so single get just a random one value, value and give it to you you can call another one names dot first it will bring for you the first item in this particular list so that is how we deal with the uh, data that is too much and we want to keep it in what in uh, one organized structure so we keep it in what we call lists others they have arrays and the rest so in your free time go ahead and practice this list so let's go ahead and look at the uh, functions eh? so we use functions uh to perform specific operations for example uh, you can look at a function as something that you use every day but you cannot use it only until you want it so before when we were writing our program everything was in our program was being ex executed but if you start implementing functions you'll find the way that if something you're not going to use it it will not be executed or only things that you want or, or a piece of code that you want it will be executed at a particular time that you need and it will also help you not to repeat yourself uh, maybe let us say you have a function that is supposed to compute a certain mathematical calculation so instead of you writing that logic again and again you can organize it and, and put it into a function then uh, start doing what start calling it that function wherever you want okay so i'm going to show you how we can implement these different functions in that programming i'll go ahead and click a new file now we code 13 underscore uh function is it dot that okay so this is what we mean by calling functions so just simply say main function and you remember when i talked about main function i just told you to be patient and the understands made by mind fun by function so now here we are so um to create a function uh the procedure is simple function cannot be inside another function first of all so you have let our functions function outside the main function now let us create uh the function that will compute uh that will display our name okay a function that will display a name so if there is a certain rule that you follow to display names and you want to you don't want to repeat that logic you can put that logic in particular function so i'm going to begin by writing a function that will just simply display my name so this function is going to return void don't mean don't mind about the word returning i'm going to explain it as we proceed there and you'll understand what's meant by a returning function so it's going to return void or what you can call nothing and then we are going to give this function a name so i can call it display name okay open bracket and close it so i can just simply go ahead and print my name is my name is Gender. Aha. Uh -huh. So now, if I run this program, this program is not going to display anything. Why? Because inside the main function, there is nothing. Even though we are saying my name is gender, but will not be displayed. Okay. So if I go ahead and run that uh, thirteen, you can see main function is empty. So, if I want now to display, if I want to display whatever, or if I want to compute everything that is inside this function, what does it mean? It means that I will have to call it. 
So calling this function will now start executing it accordingly. So I'll just simply come here uh, and say I call this function. So that's how you call the function. So to call the function, you just simply write its name and then you open bracket and close it and then a semicolon. Then that function will be called and whatever is there will be executed. So let me go ahead and run it now. So it means that the main function will start from here and then this one will be called. So when I press enter, uh, why is it on display? <laughs> okay, I think I'm not running the file, okay. So let's go ahead and set that and run the function. So you can see the name is John Jen Do. So it means that we successfully call a function and this piece of code was executed. So if the beauty about function, we say that you can call it multiple times. So when you call it multiple times, it will execute multiple times. So if I call it again like that, you see? So instead of us writing these lines five times, we wrote them only one time and they're able to be executed multiple times. So that is a brief what to call basic function. So we're going to look at other type of function, what you call argumented function. So argumented functions, they are the functions that will take arguments or that will, call, what, that will take parameters. So this function is not taking parameter, it is just displaying. But what if we want this function, every time we call it, it should display a different name. So we have to provide to it that name so that it should be able to know what it should display. So whatever we, call, we pass to that function or whatever we give to that function is what we call argument or what we call parameter. So let me go ahead and I don't know that I should create another file. <laughs> let me create another file. So control shift S and I'm going to call this one 14 and then call argument functions. I hope that's the correct spelling. Uh -huh. So I'll go ahead and uh, now that we need to display different names, okay? So this function, we are going to tell it it should receive names. So the name that it receives, then it displays it. So to tell it that it should receive names, we come here in its open br in its bracket here that opens it, and then say string. So it means that you saying this function, they should give it a string, and then you can call it maybe n. Or anything or any name or something like that name okay so I mean that to call this function you must provide to it a name or oh, a string variable so let me come and remove this guy and put name there so it means that the name that will be set will be displayed here that will be set to this function will be displayed here so now that's why you're seeing that I have now errors here. Okay? I have errors. Why? Because this function execute ex expects one argument. Okay? So I'm going to go ahead and pass to this function some arguments. So I can simply say maybe uh, Peter can say Kule. I can say Baluku and I can say Dorian. So if I do like that, then it means that everything that we pass to here, it will be displayed. Okay? So this is what we call parameter, uh, mean argumented functions, or what we call arguments, or we can call them as well as uh, parameters. Okay? Things that we pass to the function. You did put your timer. The timer is counting, sir. <laughs> hey, guys, the way you hate studying. <laughs> the timer is counting, you can see. So, uh, let's go ahead and run it. So, can you see? No, this is the wrong file. So, you can say that 14, run it. Uh, you can see uh, we have different names now different names 
display. Can you see? So that is how we pass arguments to function. So, and then another thing you should know that can receive even more than what? More than one argument. I mean, a function can receive more than what? More than one argument. For example, you can say another maybe int and then int and then say edge. So it means that this function will receive more than one argument. So I can say, uh, I can put the name and then say is, and then put edge and say years old. So by doing like that, oh, the time is up, I know. So I can pass the edge here, you see? So the argument can be separated by commas. Eh? So when I run it, so the edges and what will be displayed here. So if I run it, you can see the name and the age, the name and the age, the name and the age. So that's it for today. So before you guys go, now let me show you one thing. So I've finished working. Now I have to make sure I don't forget to commit my changes and I push them to GitHub. Because if I don't do that, what if they steal my computer so I cannot access the code? What if my team won't look at my code so they cannot get it? Even you, you're going to maybe start following this code. Maybe you want to look at how I, how I did things. Just simply come to my GitHub and Go to this repository of learn that programming you'll be able to see everything now as you see i i last pushed where it was for so i'm going to commit and push right now so that i should have all the codes updated in the next class or even you on that side if you want to see anything from my code you should be able to do that to see it so let me do it from command line this time so i can simply come to my terminal i make sure i'm in the folder where the project is so the first thing is to commit okay so just write git and then say commit and then put a dash and put m then uh, that's been the message then you put here open curl open double quotes and write uh, the comment okay maybe uh, my okay say end of lecture two okay and then I put the double quotes. So it means that this is going to be a commit. Git commit. So you can do the same from the interface or you can do it from the command terminal. When I press enter, you see these files are not added, so I have to add them. So to add them, you just say git, git, add, and then if you want to add all, just put a full stop like this. So all the files will be added, you see, and then I'll commit, okay? end of lecture too so you can see the files that we are green they are no longer green but still i've just i've just committed but i have not said these changes to my to my version that is online so to send the changes i'll just simply say git push okay so git push will push the changes to the online version so if i come to my my software i mean my github and i refresh can you see everything that we have learned has been uh, implemented here. I mean, has been saved on my what? On my GitHub in the main branch. Okay? So that is how we do what we use also the terminal. So you can go ahead and learn those terminal basic commands. Or you can also not stress yourself and you concentrate on what? On uh, what is necessary. And then you put all of these things. I mean, you'll be using what? GitHub uh software so that's it for today and uh, i'm going to share with you the tasks that you will try